Today we'll be talking about Prop A, and our guest is uh, Austin Firefighters Association President Bob Nix, who was also a battalion chief with the department. Um, if approved, Prop A would e would allow either the uh, firefighters union or the city to demand binding arbitration if contract negotiations were to reach an impasse. Um, we should point out that we reached out to City Hall as the other party that would be most affected if Prop A passed, and they respectfully declined to uh, join the discussion. So uh, thank you for being here, Mr. Nix, and we'll start out by asking you uh, tell us why the uh, Firefighters Association uh, worked to put Prop A on the ballot and what problem would this measure address? Sure. Well, first of all, thanks for having me here. I really appreciate uh, visiting with you on this topic. So we think that voting yes for Prop A is an opportunity to make the city more safe, fair and efficient. So we work by and large, we work very well with the city of Austin on a variety of issues. We don't we're not in a you know, protracted labor management battle like some places like San Antonio, we might talk about later on and their and their efforts down there. But sometimes we still reach situations where we don't come to an agreement. And if we do have a disagreement, we want to make sure we come up with a solution that's safe, safe for the citizens and for the firefighters, fair, so both sides are treated fairly dur during the process, city and firefighters, and efficient, so we can solve the problem timely and not spend a lot of money that could better be spent on tangible citizen services. So basically what Prop A is, it's a dispute resolution procedure. So when we reach some sort of dispute, a third party neutral arbitrator that is devoid of politics, that only cares about the issues that both sides bring forward in the evidence, makes will make a call. And once the call is made, we move down the road, we're harmonious again with our relationship with management and labor, and the issue solved. That, that's what we're hoping, uh, that's what we're asking the citizens to vote yes on Prop A for. Again, we think it does make the, ci the city more safe, fair, and efficient. I, I imagine uh, many Austinites aren't, aren't familiar or are too familiar with contract negotiations. Um, how are, is the average Austin resident affected if the firefighters remain at an impasse with City Hall over contract negotiations? Well, the whole purpose of contract negotiations, well, not the whole purpose, but a major purpose is it's a it's a venue to reach agreements so you can go back to harmonious relationships. So when firefighters have to be concerned about disputes rather than concentrating their jobs, we think it's a detriment to the service that, that we provide. We want to free firefighters up and let them concentrate on their jobs. We know that um, that when we have disputes in contract resolution and in, in contracts, it can cost money for the citizens and for the tax taxpayers and for the firefighters. And that's those sort of disputes should be solved quickly and efficiently with a third party, you know, arbitrator. And if we do that, we think we can get back to serving the citizens in a in a in a, a, a great fashion and save money in the process. And again, that money can be spent on more tangible services. There's never and an end of the things that we need to be spending money on with, uh, in the city of Austin. So let's be more efficient the way we settle our disputes is what we hope. I believe the fire department has um, about 1,200 employees and about a $190 million budget. Um, another way to look at arbitration is that someone uh, who is not accountable to Austin taxpayers and to Austin voters um, can end up making the final decision about how such a critical agency is funded and staffed. What's your response to that? Uh, why shouldn't those decisions be made by city staff and approved by the city council? Well, <clears throat> there's, there's some studies about binding arbitration because it's been in the private sector for some time. And some people might believe that binding arbitration would cause an upward bias in wages and benefits for firefighters. And so therefore we're taking those decisions out of the hands of management. That would be a negative thing. 
But studies indicate that's not the case. So negotiations, having to negotiate in general, does have a, a, a higher, uh, has a bias for, uh, up for higher wages and benefits, but binding arbitration does not, based on national studies. What it does, it just solves the problem quicker. And it could be that it's actually better for counsel and it's better for the citizens. I mean, <clears throat> it takes politics out of it. It takes leverage out of it. Let's say, let's say the premise was the firefighters have too much leverage at the table. Well, this premise would allow management to bring a binding arbitration and have an arbitrator rule on that. Or let's say the city manager is treating the firefighters unfairly and he's trying to withhold wages and benefits to build leverage to get something he wants. Well, again, the arbitrator can come in and make that decision. And the arbitrator, they really look at two things. They look at they look at the evidence that both sides bring, and they really don't care about politics at all. And then they look at the community standard. You know, what is council trying to accomplish? You know, and, and that will be in probably both the firefighters and the management's package when they bring it forward. And another thing about binding arbitration, when you study what happens nationally, there's not big swings in wages and benefits one way or the other. They stay, they stay within the community standard. They use, they, they basically go by, you know, the evidence that both sides present and make a call. And uh, I think a great example is what happened south of us in San Antonio. San Antonio Fire and, and, city, and city of San Antonio Management had a, ten, a seven year contentious, really a battle, be the best way to, to call it. And the firefighters got binding arbitration. I was fortunate enough to go down and visit, uh, be down there for the 10 day arbitration. And it inspired me. At the end of the arbitration, it was very civil. And at the very end, the arbitrator made the call for what they couldn't reach consensus on during the arbitration. And both sides came out and declared victory. And they are out, they are now out from under that long standing, unharmonious relationship. And that has a detriment on service. Uh, I don't think it happens right away, but over time it does. And I think it's uh, serious enough where we should have better ways to deal with it. You mentioned San Antonio after uh, voters in San Antonio approved a measure similar to Prop A in 2018. The uh, credit uh, rating agency Fitch uh, downgraded the city's credit rating. They said the city had diminished expenditure flexibility because an arbitrator uh, would be involved. Should that be a cautionary tale for Austin? No, I don't think that's. First of all, we got a great credit rating here, and secondly, I think what the, what what credit rating rating companies will learn from San Antonio is it did not have a negative effect on their finances, and that's the most important thing. It may have speculated that it did, but it didn't. The firefighters did want quite a bit more at the table when they went to arbitration. They got less than half of what they asked for, and so basically they got about a 14% raise over the seven years they without a contract, and some of that was lump sum. That's not very. That's not. That's not, you know, crazy outside of the parameters of what you would expect them to probably get annually anyway. And so if the if the bond house, and I'm not familiar with exactly what the rationale was, was concerned about an upward bias in wages and benefits, it didn't occur. And so I think it'll be informative in the future when bond houses look at this sort of thing. OK, uh, I'll ask one more before we open it up to questions that the board might have. But in, in your view, then, what would happen if voters reject Prop A? If voters reject Prop A, we'll continue to try to provide the high level of service we do today, and we'll continue to try to work with management the best we can. We just think this is an opportunity to do things better. Again, we think that, I th you know, we went across the state of Texas, and we, there's several examples in Corpus Christi where city management actually brought it to the table themselves and put it in a contract thinking that, that, you know, kind of a progressive note that getting along like this way will be better. They've had it for years. San Antonio has it now. Texarkana has it. And we just feel that we have an opportunity here to make things more safe, fair, and efficient. We really think that both sides should be treated fairly at the table. And by and large, we're going to reach most of our issues together. But when we can't, having a third party come in and, and, and make that call based on evidence, not politics, not leverage or anything else, is is going to be a big improvement. I mean, the Austin firefighters are not underpaid. I mean, we are compensated fairly well and we're very appreciative of that. So this isn't about trying to get higher pay. It isn't trying to get higher benefits. It's about being treated fairly and making sure that we do have disputes. We have had disputes the last three of the six bargaining cycles 
that we don't waste time and money on those disputes, but we settle them quickly and move on. And that's what we're hoping for. Okay. Um, we'll open it up to questions from the group, if there are any. Yeah, I wanted to follow up about, um, you know, the you alluded just a moment ago to the the previous impasses um, that the the firefighters have had with the city hall, and um, you know maybe just speak a little bit to the most recent one, um, refresh people's memory about what that impasse looked like, how long it lasted, and you've alluded to the costs of that. But can you talk a little bit more about what the, what that means? What are those costs look like? Sure. So the costs fall in two categories: legal and personnel shortages. Um, in the last dispute, so since two thousand eight, we've had six negotiation cycles and the reason we had so many in that short period of time is is three of them went to impasse and it was always about uh, hiring and training practices and so what's the history of that is for years and years and years since uh, senator barrientos past week confer and allowed uh, labor and management for police and fire to vote or basically negotiate around base laws that are in civil service law the city has, has been has been trying to increase diversity and it's a very laudable goal. And for about 15 year period, they wanted more flexibility in hiring and they were provided that by the firefighters and then they couldn't seem to solve the problem. Diversity got worse and not better. And so in 2008, I formed a very diverse group of Austin firefighters we're around the nation and we looked for best practices in hiring. And we've decided, uh, actually looking at several different places, that hiring an uh, industrial psychologist that's actually trained in this field is the best way to go. And then make sure we have important components to make sure we can be we can select firefighters to be successful in the job, but also make sure we reduce adverse impact. And the Austin Firefighter Association started that program. It's our initiative. We're very proud of the results. I'll be happy to show those to you at some point. We've reduced adverse impact to almost zero over the last 10 years for African-American, Hispanics, and females and Asians. And the city continues to want to kind of stick their fingers in that. And, and we're willing to talk about how to make it better, but we do think we've been good partners in that. We want to stay good partners in that. So in 2013 or 2012, the city gave a hiring process and they flubbed it up. They basically, instead of giving it two and a half hours, they gave it two hours. <laughs> and it was actually the old process that had adverse impact in it. So it was the one before we got involved and started making the changes. And so they kind of welcomed a consent decree and they, they, it, and they used it, I believe, to take away, you know, some of the things we negotiated in the contract. So we became the first, um, the first entity ever in, I think, the history of uh, DOJ consent decrees to, to intervene and become an equal party with uh, the DOJ and the and the city of Austin. And the interesting thing is we ended up using the exact same process we came up with before the consent decree, the one that actually worked uh, during the consent decree and after the consent decree. And the DOJ was very pleased with what we came up with. And so um, we I'm actually kind of proud that firefighters didn't go to an impasse on wages and benefits, but on a principled stand on making sure that we have highly qualified people that work for the city of Austin and we've reduced diversity or not, excuse me, increased diversity at the same time. And that's a hard thing to do when you look nationally at fires and fire and police departments. In fact, we're one of the few that may be able to achieve that. So we're, we're very proud of it. Uh, we, 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 uh, we're not ashamed of that, and we certainly want to continue to be a good partner in that area. And, and just to excuse me, just to follow up on the costs, um, it, the costs would be like lawyers' fees, or what do you mean when you say that costs oh, of being? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to duck the question. I just I just forgot to follow up on it. Yeah. So when I say personnel shortages, what happens is when you when the city of Boston went to impasse, they stopped hiring firefighters. And that's great because if you hire firefighters under civil service law, you will have massive adverse impact. It's basically just a general aptitude test. There's lots of data that shows that that's not very good for a certain groups of folks. And so they, they stopped the hiring. And when you stop hiring, you start paying more personnel costs and overtime because we have so many fire engines and, and you know, basically the way for people that don't understand how the fire department works, we're geographically located around the city. So within four minutes, four firefighters can reach you and solve your problem. And we, we mostly respond to life-threatening problems. And so those seats need to be filled. 
And so when you go to impasse, uh, it costs it costs the taxpayers money in terms of overtime costs to fill those seats. And although there's some offsetting costs between not paying salaries and benefits and paying overtime costs, it's still more. So it's not as much as might someone might realize. It's not the full cost of the overtime, but because it's offset by the salary and benefit reduction, but it's still a significant cost that we shouldn't be accruing. So we are the ones that are trying to get away from the overtime. We're saying let's solve these disputes and not have that money spent on 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 on, on increased overtime personnel costs. Let's get the thing solved. And let's have a third party person do it that's that's neutral and just looks at the evidence and the community standard and let's move on down the road. And so that's that's what we're hoping. Does that answer your question? Hi, Chief. Thank you. Two questions. One of them, if you go to binding arbitration, who pays for the arbitrator and everything related to it? A. B, I'm still not clear on what the pain point is. You had mentioned at the beginning that you have a you, you have a good working relationship with the city of Austin versus San Antonio, but I'm trying to figure out exactly what is the pain point. Is it that the city's trying to push more hiring, and you're and it's is it a is it diversity? An issue that I don't know exactly what the pain point is that that's that's possibly creating this. That you I don't feel know. now. I think sometimes I didn't mean to cut you off. Did you finish? No, 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 no. Okay, okay, no sorry, go, go, ahead, go ahead. Good. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I think I don't know. I think it's gotten a lot better. Um, when when diversity was bad and the city was taking stabs at it, it wasn't very successful. They would blame firefighters for not giving enough flexibility. So it created this terrible sort of thing in the community against firefighters. Uh, when I took uh, when I became president, it was I tried to turn that around. That's why we we formed this diversity group to go around and find best practices. I think management feels it's like their management right to do that. But I think if they were a little more progressive in their thought that realize any way you achieve it is okay as long as all sides are being good stakeholders. I think there's a little bit of, you know, perhaps management ego there where they want to be the ones to do it and, and kick us out. But it's been proven for the last 10 years we've been good stakeholders and, and produce good results as being a part of it. And uh, we spend every time we the process is over. We spent about five thousand dollars and have a professor in AM doing a full analysis, an adverse impact analysis, so that we can make sure we understand exactly the effect the process had and what we need to change for next time. We are heavily invested in diversity and making sure that we have an inclusive process. Um, so sometimes I think you just have these natural sort of ideas between labor and management about what they should be in charge of. <laughs> And uh, whenever those things kind of hit a nexus, that's sometimes when you have a dispute. I mean, this last uh, contract was a five-year contract, and arguably we did not get a cost of living raise. It was, we got a six and a quarter percent raise over five years. That's a pretty minor raise. First year was a quarter of a percent. The second year was half a percent, but we didn't go to impasse, <laughs> you know? And so we were trying to work with management, but, uh, I think that another thing I really didn't mention, I really like about binding arbitration is this, 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 this effect it has on both sides. So when you get binding arbitration, you're less likely to go to impasse. And, 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 and studies show that nationally is that when you both sides know they're going to go to binding arbitration, they're more apt to work it out at the table together. And I think that change of dynamic could be extremely beneficial uh, to reach better solutions together at the table, really look at our interests and try to reach an equilibrium that is best for the firefighters, management, and the citizens. Who would, uh, who would pay for the arbitrator? The arbitrator is paid by both sides equally. And normally what you have is three arbitrators. You have the neutral, which is paid half and half by the city and the firefighters. And then you have, then you have like an arbitration team. You normally where the, the firefighters would hire another arbitrator that kind of be theirs, and the city would hire one that was kind of be theirs. And that way, those three can kind of talk, uh, you know, privately about what they saw that day and look at the evidence. And clearly, the cities will advocate for city interest, and ours will advocate for ours. But, but a, a two out of three vote of the arbitrator is how they rule on each issue. But um, it's uh, I saw that in San Antonio. It was a very beneficial thing. I think I think having three heads in the problem really really helped settle some of their disputes. So the costs are, are, are shared equally between the city of Austin and the firefighters. Uh, 
Okay. Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Nix, thank you so much for uh, participating today. I appreciate your time and your uh, thoughts. Absolutely. I really appreciate you guys having me on and a uh, great set of questions. Thank you. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. Stay Take safe. Care.